Uh... Hi, everybody. Hi, this is Trey Parker. Uh... This is Matt Stone. This is the season 12 yep. DVD commentary that we have been so excited about for weeks. We've been just aching to do this. We just yeah. got done doing the season, what, a week and a half ago? Yep. And we basically spend the years making the, we spend the year making a season just so that we can do commentary. Yeah, we love it. We just think about it all year long about <laughs> what we're going to say in the commentary. It was hard. We just, it's just after Thanksgiving as we record this, and I, I was calling Trey all Thanksgiving. I was like, can you believe it? Next Monday we get to do commentary. Oh my God, I'm so fucking excited. No more excited. sitting around on the couch watching football. We get to go down to the office and do commentary. And talk about the shit that we just did. <laughs> So anyway, with that, <laughs> let's get going on tonsil trouble. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, we we actually just finished. We're starting to catch up to our seasons now because we just finished season twelve. Like what, a week ago? Yeah, a week and a, a, week half, and a half, ago. half ago. We did the the last episode, the vampire episode, um, and so that means that this, which was the first, was back in like March or something like that. Yeah, it must have been. Yeah, and uh, in very typical fashion what happened with this episode was this was we we made this ahead of time uh, meaning a few weeks ahead of before the the run uh, thinking all right we'll make a show that we can sort of bank and show later in the run so that we can get a few days off this will for sure be funny and easy to do yeah and so we Carmen getting aids we uh we animated about half of it and then of course as always it got to be like saturday before the uh, the first show was supposed to air, and we just didn't know what to do, and so we just... No, that, actually, we did. We, we bailed on the Britney show. We bailed on two shows. We, it was going to we be gonna the strike the show. We had right. the strike show going, and we had Britney going. Basically, what happens is we always have a really good idea for the first show that we think, and we have a lot of uh, faith in it, and then as it gets close to the air date, we freak out yeah. and basically lose faith in whatever show we're doing yeah. and push it and then grab some other idea... And we're, we end up screwing it up. Yeah. Like and just go, <laughs> and just go with the simplest thing we. So have. we were going to start this episode. I mean, this run. I remember we were going to start with the Britney show. Right. And then we decided no, right. that's too hardcore. We need to start with the strike. Which is show. so funny because it just doesn't matter what show we start yeah. with anymore. No like, one even fucking yeah, cares. It's not except like, for us. Most people see it on like the internet or DVDs anyway. <laughs> so it's like it totally doesn't matter which shows first. But we freak out about it anyway. <laughs> It's very 1980s and 70s of us to think that people actually are sitting around yeah. going, wow, what's going to be the first episode? Because there's, there's no other way to see it, you know, right. back then, but now there is. And we realized, like, with this, the hard thing was that as people were watching it, even as some of the writers that we were showing it to, because we had kind of done it ahead of time, everyone's kind of sitting there going, okay, well, Cartman obviously doesn't really have AIDS, so what's going on here? And so as you're watching this, you're kind of going, okay, so what's the joke? What's the joke? And it's like, no, he really does have AIDS. <laughs> Yeah, that was the big struggle was making sure people knew that, no, he really does. Oh, no. He really does have AIDS. I think the big breakthrough, too, is finally coming up with the... We didn't really have an end, and then we came up with the cash thing. Yeah, that was our big breakthrough. <laughs> that, was our big, that was our big breakthrough that got us through this episode. Once we came up with the cash thing, we're like, oh, this could be a first episode. Well, what America's we had, hanging by a thread wondering yeah. what we're going to do for our first episode. I mean, I good. do love... The thing that I lo The reason that, you know, we had a lot of faith in this one was just because... I think that some of the dialogue between Cartman and Kyle in this is some of their best dialogue. There's just scenes of them just, you know, sitting there talking yeah. to each other that are some of the funniest, I think, that they've ever... They've yeah. When he gives Kyle AIDS, that's a good moment. <laughs> yeah. like, I thought it was funny. The and, HIV, yeah. the HIV passes. and it's great, too, that as soon as he gets AIDS, he suddenly starts dressing like Tom Hanks in Philadelphia. <laughs> he even wears a little Philadelphia hat. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. That's an explicit <laughs> scarf. Because that's what people do when they get a terminal disease is they start wearing a scarf. Yeah, a, little and a, cough and a, a little cough and a scarf. <laughs> All right, let's move on. To, that, that's pretty good, right? We, yeah, we should we do enough for this? One. That was okay. good. Okay, that was good. really good. Good start. Live from Chicago. So this is the Britney show, which is among the top, in the top five uh, of what we call polarizing episodes, um, because this was, this is one of those shows where it's basically people totally loved it and it's one of their favorite shows, or people just totally hated it, and uh, it, which was interesting because you know when we first, when we put it out, um, kind of like Britney Spears actually, yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Mir mirroring either, Britney yeah. Spears popularity, which was our point. It's just one of those shows where you're either you're either on the train or you're, if you're not on the train, then it's a it's a big bummer the whole time because it's just like you're either kind of in on the joke or like you're, it's just really stupid. And uh, but um, you know our first our first feedback and you know we've learned not to pay much attention to it, but all the message boards, which is usually just all the kids, they really didn't they didn't get it at all. But but then we started hearing back from friends and then and it's weird the more we traveled north. Like, a lot of people in Canada really liked it, and a lot of people in, in New York really liked it. And But, our, like, a lot of our friends who 
especially if you know the lottery, <coughs> and we know that's not like a uh, real pop culture <laughs> thing <laughs> reference, <laughs> but um, you know the I, the sub the, the big idea of doing the lottery with Britney Spears we thought was a pretty cool idea, but. We get that if, if, you, if you don't really get that, then it <laughs> it's just really it'll just be like, why are you being so mean? But you still get peeing on a ladybug. <laughs> we did not. I mean, we never thought that the episode was mean to Britney Spears. We thought it was mean to the press. And, and there are people us. who thought, yeah, mean to ourselves. And people really thought it was like, it was mean to people who thought, oh, my God, they're doing that to Britney Spears. Just we didn't get it. Just didn't get it and misunderstood yeah. it. But there is also like, even even if you do get it. This episode is definitely, there are some points this episode there were laughs. We definitely, like, <coughs> less, it's less about laughs and more about, no, this ha- this is the point. Right. You know, right. and especially at the end where it's like, right. nope, it's not funny. Right. Fuck you. Right. You just have to kind of sit here and watch right. it. We're not putting the jokes in and the stoning, you know. Right and it's like. <laughs> just kind of have to sit there and suck it. Yeah. Because that, that was, you know, we were talking about, I remember being on the writer's retreat for this run and we're talking about things to do and. You know, it was, it was just, it was during that week, you know, I mean, there were a lot of weeks where Britney was self-destructing, but it was right during that time where it was just the very worst. And it was really during that week where everyone was like, she's going to kill herself. She's going to kill herself for sure. And so we're like, all right, well, let's have her kill herself on the show. Right. And that was really the thing is like, think how timely people will think we are because we were just <laughs> guessing she was going to kill herself. And we, we'd have the show kind of ready to go. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But she did. She pulled through. So. Um. Oh, yeah, she pulled through. That's good. It was, it was a little bit like, I mean, I'm, we're obviously the most, like, ready to make fun of celebrities and their stupid obsessions. But it was kind of unnerving that, that time, especially like you go out to dinner with, like, really mild-mannered people. And like, I can't wait to see her just kill herself. How's she going to yeah. kill herself? You're yeah. like, really, man? Yeah. Like, really want someone to kill herself? And that's kind of why we had Kyle, you know, <laughs> Kyle in the show. And, cause, and that was the thing. Some people, too, were like, oh, like, you we're guys are, usually those guys, like, but not like my like, mom yeah, and but stuff. But they're like, you guys are hypocrites because you're the ones that do this to celebrities. And we're like, yeah, yeah, we know. And that's why <laughs> yeah. Kyle says that. Like, we're all responsible for this. And maybe this one time, you know, it's got to be all okay. But maybe this one time we should kind of let her alone, you know, because she is going to fucking kill herself. <laughs> and... uh so and she didn't kill herself. I think it's thanks to us actually. She probably didn't kill herself. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't kill herself. But the other, um, you know, the other thing was this this point right here where she actually shoots her head off. Yeah, that was the really kind of tricky part. Yeah, it was basically episode. from that moment in the show, you're either on the train or you're not on the train. <laughs> that was the real. That was the real tricky part. Yeah, if you're not on the train, then we're not. It's not stopping for you. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on. This is major boobage. Which is a pretty fun episode. It I, it was pretty brutal for um, basically the whole idea of trying to do something in heavy metal. You know, and we we had the idea on the retreat. Let's do something you know heavy metal, and then we came up with the whole thing with the cats and the drugs and all that. And you know, we knew we had a, a good idea, but when we came back, it was one of those ideas we came back and told production, and they're just staring at us, you know, blankly, like, okay, well, we need a year to do that because we're suddenly taking, you know our little construction paper cutouts and we're saying, okay, now take our entire engine and make it look like heavy metal, which is all, you know, cell drawings. And really well, we've done, we've done a lot of animation styles before, like anime and uh, um, even the World of Warcraft stuff we did with our machines. But, I mean, so we kind of wrongly, we totally wrongly thought that we could figure out a computerized shortcut. Yeah. Basically to do that, that Ralph Bakshi well, we rotoscoping of, yeah. look. And so we kind of didn't plan, but basically in the end, we, we basically had to hand hand draw we yeah. didn't me and we matt had, me and matt yeah. had to sit and draw, hand draw everything no. we got a bunch of coffee we, and stayed up for we, five weeks we tried we you know we are indeed it a long time and tried to get you know the computers to get that look and it just you know you can't get that look um and so we're finally like okay well it's all gonna have to be hand drawn and they're like okay well we need a year and we're like okay well we'll, we'll we won't do it first then we'll do <laughs> we'll do it like you know we'll have three weeks we'll do it and basically we did the, sort of the same thing we did for warcraft where we hired a, another bunch of uh animators real and, real artists who yeah. really draw and the you know stuff. everyone in our building a lot of people in our building are totally capable of doing and, and did a lot of it too but we just needed the extra help and you know the storyboard department who are all our storyboard department are all great artists and so they were able to make all the drawings but then you just had to hire all these people to do all these in-betweens that just took basically the equivalent like we had to set up a mini korea yeah in our, in our like just the and we got, we got done. to see for a few weeks what it's like to do a real animated show. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's horrible. By the way, if we had to do an animated show that way, we would never fucking have done it. No. Yeah, I wouldn't, we wouldn't have even finished, like, two shows. No. We'd, be, we'd rid- be halfway through season one right now. It's ridiculous <laughs> how slow. 
I mean, our animation process we think is slow and like watching paint dry, and this is nothing compared to hand drawn cell animation. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Why? Why people do that? And really, the worst part about making this episode was we had to watch heavy metal like three times, <laughs> because you know people are like that's cool. You did heavy metal. You're heavy metal fans. It's like no, I think it sucks. I thought it sucked when I was ten or whatever when it came out. I think it sucks now, and it was just, uh, you know, I mean, I guess I, I get it that it was what it was, but uh, it's just I think a I had crappy be- movie. I think I had better recollections of it. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. things you're like, oh yeah, that was awesome. Because yeah, you've been you told watch it, it's awesome. Like, really? You this? watch it, you go, shit. I mean, there's like two little good shots in it. There's a bunch of crap in it. Yeah. But yeah, we did have to watch it like three times. There's way more plot that makes sense in this one minute right here than there is in the entire real heavy metal movie. <laughs> <laughs> the big breakthrough with this too in the writer's meeting is when we finally hit on the thing of like, oh yeah, all those is making it major boobage and making it about boobs and there's boobs on the buildings and it's just like basically all that kind of like heavy metal art just is random based. violence like that yeah it's also but no it's reason. also just geeks like wanting to draw boobs basically yeah you know and have it not boobs seem, everywhere yeah but again it's all that you know it's great all these backgrounds and everything it really shows off what our you know what our storyboard department and artists can actually do in this building <laughs> yeah they <laughs> designed they all these characters little circles and, and squares all the time <laughs> All right, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, there you go. Let's move on. So this is Canada on Strike, which a lot of people think was a parody of the writer's strike that was happening right at the time, but it's actually not. It's a docudrama of exactly what happened with, <laughs> with the writer's strike. It is uh, completely what happened. I remember we were, it was uh, the season before that, the end of season 11, and we couldn't come up with an idea for an episode, and that was right when the strike happened. And we're like, really? There's a stri- we can go on strike? And we were so excited because we were going to get out without having to make the last show, which we didn't have an idea for, and we were stressing out. And then Anne, the producer, said, no, we're not union. And I was like, well, that doesn't matter. We have to strike in solidarity with our brothers and sisters. <laughs> we're going to strike in solidarity. <laughs> and so we really were trying to strike really hard. And then finally, no, you guys have to work. And we're like, damn it. And we had to sit and come up with a show. People kept emailing me, are you guys going to go on strike? And I was like, God, I wish we could. Yeah. Then we wouldn't have to work. And Before some of our writers did go on strike. One of or our writers tried. tried. She kind of did. She yeah. kind. She voted for the strike. What they did is they got all the writers and they went down to the convention center when they voted for the strike. Remember? And they got yeah. Basically, it was like this. Hey, everyone, get together. We're going to vote for the strike. So like twenty thousand or ten thousand writers went down to the convention center. Everyone, most of them drunk because they got it to dinner before. They're going to go out to dinner after. Right. And they got them all riled up and they all vote. Like ninety percent of them voted for the strike. And honestly, because we, you know, obviously unscientifically, but. Every single writer I talked to within three weeks was like, I wish I hadn't voted for the strike. They were all so yeah. instantly bummed. They <laughs> absolutely, so completely they got, fucked themselves. They got to- totally snowed, and then they all didn't go to work for six months. And we months. didn't feel, you know, it's like they got duped, and that's why we wanted to make this show, because they really did have this, these, idiot WG, <laughs> or, uh, these idiot WGA leaders who were basically like, you know, within a couple weeks, they realized they had just fucked everyone super hard, and they're like, "All right, how do we get out of this without looking like the biggest douches in the world?" And so then they basically do exactly what they do at the end of the show, which is they get nothing, but then they try to convince everyone that they they got everything. And they remember they said this is a this is a, the biggest labor victory in the twenty yeah. first century or twenty second century. At all, they got nothing, and they and they even and then they they said that they had a celebration party. They actually had a celebration party, and, and friends of ours that went said that they were literally writers standing around with martini glasses trying to smile, just knowing they had all gotten super fucked out of a bunch of money and didn't get anything in return. And DJ didn't strike and got all the same stuff. Yeah. So lame. And so, uh, but meanwhile, you know. He was just watching, basically, and that's what, you know, we have this bad guy in this episode who basically dupes the, the country of Canada. Because if someone comes along and says, hey, you're getting screwed, you know, and you don't know any better, you're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. what they did to the writers, and then they all kind of started dying, yeah. and we thought that was pretty funny that they're all sitting there dying. <laughs> and the great thing, what we really lucked out, too, with the timing, of, I mean, we couldn't be more thankful to the WGA for the timing of the strike, because they basically, they, they went on strike the week that we were done with season 11, and the strike ended right about the time that season 12 started. It's perfect. And it was perfect for us because it never had to co- become an issue, you know, where they were coming to us and going, hey, you guys shouldn't work, and you're not, you know, everyone just thought we were on strike, too. <laughs> Which is pretty great. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're on strike, too. But whatever. But, it's you know, if, if they had still been on strike and the season started, we'd be making shows. And Between, this probably would have been the first one, actually. Between this, SAG is about it's talking about striking right now. So, like, if there could be anybody dumber than WJ, it'll be SAG, of course. 
So we've been in well, we've been in town for what t- ten or twelve years. Yeah. And there's been two strikes. There's been the SAG strike and then this strike, and they are absolutely they just don't work. No, hey, there's just got to be a better way than like putting the whole town out of work plus yourselves. Yeah. But the great like, stories to come. Yeah, the, like some of the singles lines yeah, coming God, out of the There's so many great stories lines. that came out. There was like, there was singles day at the strike. And there, there was like, the, the the writers all made certain days of like, you know, hey, it's bring a dog day to the strike line. And they're trying to do all this stuff to get people to the picket line. And we heard too that it's like, you know, people are there with their, their you know, they're there with their cell phones and their mochaccinos. Starbucks and stuff cups. Like that. And, they're, and they're on singles day. I thought it was like, you guys, what are you doing? Come on. <laughs> Yeah, it just looked it just was looked p- p- pathetic. Yeah, and it didn't work, and yeah. it didn't do anything, and um, it was just kind of sad. It was yeah, it was really sad, and it's you know, the uh, it was just that kind of thing of like no one would say, no one wanted to say that they completely got fucked over, and and still to this day, of course, all the WGA people will say, oh, my, were you kidding? We got this, that, and the other. We did a great thing. That strike was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the DGA, the DGA proved that they didn't have to go on strike. Right, exactly. So now we're gonna have a bunch of writers hate us, and I don't care because I'll argue with all of them. Yeah, fuck like, all y'all. Yeah. All right. Was oh, that enough? Did we get enough there? I'm trying to make them long enough. All right, next one. So th- this uh, this show had was a few ideas put together. Um, <laughs> yeah, a couple. On the, yeah, on the uh, on the writers retreat. The writers retreat happened, I think, right after the Super Bowl, or right after the yeah, Super Bowl. Yeah, right after the Super Bowl. So. Um, you know, we were just talking a lot about. Oh no, 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 the Super Bowl hadn't happened. That's right. No, the, the, no, because remember, oh, the we were Super Bowl like, hadn't happened. That's right. right. It was before the Super Bowl. Because it, what, the Patriots were on their way to being sixteen and zero, basically. Right, and that's when we th- and we, th- everyone thought the Patriots are going to yeah, win. Yeah, we're like, Super okay, Bowl. they're going to win it all. So we've got to do something to kind of answer that because take down Bill Belichick. Like, <laughs> we're both. I mean, I'm a huge football fan. Matt's a football fan, and like, we we really felt like that whole thing that happened with the the video cameras or whatever that. It really got swept under the rug, and no matter what anyone else says, you know, we heard everything. Everyone's like, "Oh, well, everybody does it." No, it wasn't as big a deal as they made it out to be. It's like, okay, but we always grew up learning that if you cheat, you know, there's 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 you know, consequences yeah, that matter. There's, there's consequences that matter, and and that if you cheat, you're a cheater. And uh, but the NFL obviously really didn't want that uh, image, and so they really tried to make it go. Yeah, away. you could tell the NFL closed ranks yeah. re- really quickly, and even the. What was kind of disturbing was the was the um, commentators on television. It was any. It was almost like that. It was almost like a weird like, like the way some news stuff. It was like anybody who said, "Hey, you know what? I, I really think that that's wrong. They should lose the game, or you know, right. some like massive kind of thing should happen." It, they were just shouted down on yeah. on by these commentators. Almost like the whole industry of football realized that that the Im- the image of cheating in the NFL would would, would hurt would, all their jobs. Which which you know, but. It ended up having, for me, the opposite effect. You know, it, they should have kind of owned up to it and yeah. taken care of it, and then they would have, been, like, appeared to be a lot better. Yeah. But anyway, it was just like, um, you know, the problem now with the Patriots is forever that era, they're cheaters, and Bill Belichick's a cheater, and they're all cheaters. And obviously, they didn't get there just by cheating and all those other besides, but that's what happens when, when you don't, like, lose that one game. You know what right. I mean? They lose that one game. You reverse the that one game, but they can't do because of Vegas. Um, and betting, yeah. then all of a sudden the whole thing makes sense. So anyway, we thought it was very important for us to take down Bill Belichick. Well, and we thought, we thought at the writers, I remember at the writers retreat, we're like, well, this is only going to work if the Patriots win. Right. Because yeah. if they win, then we came up with this whole idea of doing stand and deliver, and we were going to actually. And of course, have Hartman lo- really looking up to Bill Belichick. Right. You right. Know, but like, originally, remember, it was going to be a real like uh, this Hispanic guy that shows up to teach the kids. <laughs> that was going to be a real uh, parody cheating. of stand and deliver, and how yeah. cheaters do win. And that look at the Patriots, they cheated and they cheated and they won the Super Bowl. And nobody cares <laughs> as long as you know you win. No one cares if you cheat. And so. But then, of course, Patriots lost the Super Bowl. Then, of course, Bowl. God intervened. Yeah, and God, God made the sure the Patriots did. Holy win. hand of God touched that game. And then, so for a while, we're like, "Oh, it's too bad we can't do that idea now." But then we're like, "Well, no, because now we can just do the message that they gave up on cheating too soon." <laughs> you know, like if you're gonna cheat, you gotta cheat to the top. And that Belichick screwed his team because when it mattered most at the Super Bowl, he didn't cheat. Yeah. And so, uh, so then we're like, "Okay, now this this can be an idea that it'll, it'll work well." And then, of course. But we always kind of felt like it was sort of a, a half of an idea, and then we had this other half of an idea, which was about Garrison finally. I, we'd been wanting to make turn Garrison back into a man again, just because we really want Garrison to go full circle from you know a, 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 a straight guy who hates gays to a gay guy to a woman, a woman who hates lesbians to a lesbian right. to a back to a man. 
who now is going to, I don't know. Hate. Yeah, we graphed it out. I think we got everything. Yeah. <laughs> but we had to, you know, we had to get a penis bag, and that's right about the time that that little photo with the mouse with the ear on it came out on the internet, but which was fake apparently. But um, <laughs> but then it, we believed you know, it. it. It immediately, you know, the idea of a little uh, penis running. Well, we around, thought it know. was really like somebody sewed an ear on there. They grew an ear, but what they did was they took a ear-shaped thing of like plastic stump, something right, that right. like flesh could grow on. So right. it always just had the shape of an ear, and then they just made flesh grow on it like moss, and right. it happened. So it was really kind of a bummer when we found that out. But with in our episode, we just made it a real penis on a mouse. Yeah, we and then the penis and um, and mouse sing to each other. Yep, we just photoshopped Eric Stiles' penis onto the <laughs> mouse. <laughs> it was easy. <laughs> All right, that's cool. All right, enough of that. So this is our uh, no internet show, which is another one of those ideas we'd had for a long time, I think. Yeah, an idea we've had for a long. In fact, I think we had no, yeah. a lot of the scenes of people just running around screaming that there was no internet for a long time before we really kind of figured out Jelly the rest the of the show. The no, Dust Bowl. Yeah, once we figured out the Grapes of Wrath thing. Like yeah, Jelly then it seemed to be kind of deeper and better. But I, yeah, we did have we had the scenes of everyone running around and freaking out and going to Starbucks no, looking for a Wi-Fi no spot. We had some of that stuff yeah. done before. I don't just because it's so ch- on every writer's retreat we have, you know, there's that if you, if you ever, you know, in a hotel especially, and you, there's no internet, it's like uh, it's just the end this actually this actually happened to me a couple weeks ago where I it was when we were still working where I like somehow like I don't read the newspaper anymore because I just look at everything on the internet and I was looking at a newspaper and there was a name I didn't recognize and in my head I was like click on it I can't click on the I can't click on the name I was like trying to click on something oh, in the right. newspaper you know what I mean you're so used to like <laughs> oh I don't know what that is and you click on it you find link, out link to it. yeah I was trying to link to something in like the regular newspaper at a diner and it didn't quite work <laughs> but once you it was like the whole thing of once you're kind of used to it it now has become for most of us the internet is like it's kind of like water from, you know what I mean it's like this thing that's that uh, we're just so used to we can't live without this episode does definitely have I think the most offensive shot we've ever done in any South Park episode ever and the, I cannot believe they let with us with the slimed me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually, I actually cannot believe they let us put that on the air. <laughs> and when I see it, it was, it was one of those that you know, when you're making a show, it's all just kind of you know, you're just trying to get everything on you can. You're not really thinking it through. And this was one of those episodes that I saw a few weeks later, and I was like, or, you know, or a few months later, and I was just like, oh, that's not cool. Like I was really, I was really disappointed in the network. I'm also glad we got we got to work in. I mean, that came out of the whole discussion about when we were in high school. Um, 4.5 million years ago, you know, you could get off by looking at a Playboy. And now I look at a Playboy now, and I'm like, that is, it's like an old pinup doll from World War II, yeah. a pinup poster. It's just like, who could fucking get off on that? Yeah, now we're used to seeing <laughs> Japanese girls puke on each other. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we got to work on that. <laughs> it's like, I wonder, like, what, 18-year-old kids, like, it's like, what is it going to morph into? Like, yeah. What kind of crazy shit are these kids going to need in 10 years? My favorite, though, is putting in the Brazilian fart porn because that, <laughs> I think we first saw Brazilian fart porn about two years ago. It was circling around the office. And I don't know where you see, if you just type in, try, type in Brazilian fart porn on your search engine and you'll find it. It now, is the single go do it. goddamn funniest thing I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. And I, I still, I can, it's one of those things I can watch like a thousand times, like Devil's Advocate, <laughs> and, and, just, and just laugh my ass off. It's just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Go go check it out right now. It's really awesome. Also, this episode, what's the song? What's the song that Randy sings on the? Oh, I'm going down the road. For you so, uh, after this episode came out, Jason McHugh, our uh, friend and old producer, buddy from Cannibal, old pr- buddy from Cannibal, he uh, he emailed me and said, you know, that's one of his. Uh, Jason's a big Deadhead and followed the Dead and went to a bunch of concerts. He said that that was one of uh, we. Oh, he said, oh, you guys did a Grateful Dead song, and I said, no, no, it's in it's in Grapes of Wrath, and. Uh, and Trey, I said, oh, and Trey really likes that song, like that scene, so he put it in here. And then Jason told me that was Jerry Garcia's favorite movie, and that was his favorite scene, and that's why they played it. Really? So Trey Parker and Jerry Garcia have that in common. Weak. <laughs> Weak. I can't stand the Grateful Dead. <laughs> I know Trey hates the Grateful Dead, so like, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> I was like, well, at least Jerry has good taste on that <laughs> shit, you know? But we did, we did that scene almost verbatim. That there is that scene in Grapes of Wrath, which... I don't really. I'm not a big Grapes of Wrath, the movie fan. I'm a yeah, big Steinbeck. I love Steinbeck, but I I don't. The movie, I, I don't know. Well, it's just it's old. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like old. watching an old '40s movie. But I do like how people act and they talk all slow like. <laughs> the whole movie, if it was shot today, would be like a half an hour long because everyone's just huge pauses really in between everything, long <laughs> pauses. 
and that you know when they drive out west it takes forever they yeah. show every it's like the old time they just here they come over things follow the shots all totally out of frame and it fades down <laughs> <laughs> all right that's good so this is super fun time and this um this episode the idea of having a living museum and something actually happens with, with an original and people that wouldn't break character. and people who wouldn't break character while a blank is happening we had for a couple of years and we could never quite always smashing break it. like in fact flood. this was the original idea for the katrina episode we did that's right was there was going to be a flood the boys were going to be at a pioneer village no one would break character there'd be a big flood or something right um, but we just couldn't figure out what the boys are doing okay they're in a flood and they're what? trying to unflood the place like yeah. what you know it's like not as then we finally you know we were doing this episode we came up with the um the idea of a you know a diehard or you know bank robber terrorist kind of thing and then then the boys had something to get out of and then it kind of all started to happen but we've had this idea of like these living museums making fun of these living museums for a long time because they're they're pretty funny yeah. we went to plymouth plantation one time me and trey yeah and watched them not break character there and get frustrated yeah it's really frustrating i think everyone <laughs> everyone has been to a place like this but <laughs> you know I, i'll always remember season 12 at because it was a pretty <coughs> rough season uh all in all uh, all the shows were pretty hard and kind of brutal and but for some reason, both run, this run and then the second half of 12 season, both the last shows we figured out on Thursday and had like a super easy time. Was this one of those? This was one of those two where we, we went in and the Thursday, we went in thinking, okay, we've got nothing and we're really tired and beat. And then we just, boom, you know, it just came out and we sort of knew, once we kind of combined it with, Okay. Oh, it's ba it's a bank heist, and that's what the you know that's why they won't break character. And then meanwhile, we you know got we had a different and we had a different episode with the Celebrity Sports Center idea. We kind of yeah, combined it a little bit. Because there used to be this place in Colorado when we were growing up called Celebrity Sports Center, which was just like, um, you know, when you're ten years old in Colorado, it's like fucking heaven. Yeah. They have a water slide and like five arcade games and some shit like that. And so the idea was that the boys were going to go on a field trip, and then. We had a different idea for a show. The boys were going to go on a field trip, and then they were going to escape. And Cartman and Butters were going to be pals that wouldn't, would, you know, and Butters wouldn't let go of his hand. <laughs> they were going to go to Celebrity Sports Center, so we kind of combined those it two. It kind of happens a lot, you know, where you've, you've got ideas floating around that have never panned out, and then suddenly you realize, oh, put those two together, and it totally works. Yeah. And when that happens, it's, it's really nice. Um, and then I remember the big thing we died on this, and we tried to figure out. The last thing of this episode to figure out, we figured out on Tuesday late in the evening was, how to get Butters and Cartman back into the when they're coming back in yeah. from Super Fun Time, the part where they shimmy across the thing because they had the knot and they're hanging on the pole because they wouldn't let go hands. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, that was like this brutal. Was very it was like this thing where it's like all, as soon as we fucking figure this out, we can basically go home for five months. Yeah, <laughs> and we couldn't figure it out. <laughs> we couldn't figure it out. We were just dying on that stupid like how to get them back into there. Super fun time was fun. Too. Well, because we also had there was a place called Funplex. Funplex. Yeah, Funplex on Kipling. I yeah. think it's still it's called something else now, but yeah. but it was basically a super fun time. And it I had, had a ball ballroom. It was it was new. It was a newer version of Celebrity Sports Center. I had yeah. a ballroom, a ball, you know, ball pits, little plastic oh, with balls. Oh, little plastic balls, yeah. And lots of arcade games and race cars and shit. And we liked the idea. We were basically doing Die Hard, but that they had robbed a Burger King. <laughs> well. That could be it for this yeah, first half. We'll go first to the half, of the, half of the season. Let's go to the second half and get going on that. So this was now. Now we're in the second half of the season. So basically, these are the shows that came out October, November, um, for the fall run, and you know the two big things that had happened basically over the summer were the big Summer Olympics games and the travesty of the Indiana Jones movie. Um, <laughs> and so we had come up with the idea, you know, we, we had come up with these ideas, but it's so funny because, you know, we're, we kind of are uh, victims of our own uh, success in the, in the sense that we, you know, we had this fun idea to do with Indiana Jones and with the Olympics, but we're like, yeah, but, you know, that's already been like three months ago now. And people are, you know, it's like so passe now. <laughs> it's like for any other show, it's, it's so really dumb not that, passe. It's so dumb that we think that. Yeah, but it's so like. So dumb. It, it's really, uh, for us, you know, people are expecting us to comment on what happened the week before, not what happened three months ago. Or um, we or we think they are. Well, we think they are, yeah. yeah. And some do. I mean, some, and sure, it's mostly the kids, you know, that are just basically like, oh, whatever, Indiana Jones, that came out four months ago. Why are they talking about that? You know, but it's like, <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> Give us a little break. Are you all right? The other thing is, is we wanted to talk about Indiana Jones. Yeah. You know, raping, the raping of Indiana Jones. Yeah, it just was really... 
okay as a travesty. You know, but there, <laughs> don't get us started. There's so many, <laughs> yeah. But there's so many places we wanted to go with that idea, and um, you know, really, probably this could have easily been two episodes. You know, a whole Indiana Jones show and a whole um, uh, China, China Problem Olympic. show. And one thing that happened actually was this doing this show, and you can totally tell from listening. I was sicker than I've ever been trying to do a show, and so. That's right. You had that I, really bad I actually flu. lost my voice, remember? On, yeah. On Sunday, I had completely lost my voice. Matt had to do all of my lines. And then they had a doctor come in and give me a shot of steroids. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that shit worked. It was amazing. Yeah, it was. Like, Trey couldn't even talk, like, lose your voice talk. And then two hours later, it worked. The doctor said, Just he's like, shot you with I'm going to shoot you with this. And he's like, you're going to go to sleep for two hours. And I'm like, I can't sleep for two hours. It's Sunday. we got to get the show. He's like, <laughs> listen to me. You're going to sleep for two hours. And when you get up, you're going to be fine. I'm like, there's no way. Because it was like... <laughs> The worst flu. I couldn't talk, and he shoots me the stuff. I pass out. I wake up and I go into Ann's office, and I'm like, I think I'm okay. And Where everyone's the shocked f- that why I. Why the fuck don't they, everyone get that <laughs> all the time? What is that stuff? But then he did warn me, and he said, you know, he's like, basically, what we're doing is we're canceling your like, you know, when you get you're a flu and a cold, right. your body's trying to get rid of something. He's like, we're canceling that, so it's gonna stay. And he's basically like, we're putting it on hold. And so now, as I'm doing this, I'm super sick still because seven weeks it, later. Yeah, seven weeks later. <laughs> What I like about the raping parts of, besides the fact that, um, what I like about the raping of A.A. Jones, these, these scenes, and this again, it's kind of the Britney, it kind of reminds me of the Britney show, and it's, it's very dark, yep. and it's very much like we're going to, you know, we're giving up some laughs for, like, intensity or whatever, yep. and what I like about it is that's, and if someone, if, if, God help me if George Lucas came up to me and said, hey, that wasn't cool, what you, what you did, that, that hurt my feelings or whatever, you know, I just have to sit there and watch. Like, in other words, like, we, that's what it felt like watching the Indiana Jones movie. It's like, there, there was a point, it was like, you're, you're, we were saying, is like, you're going to have to sit here and watch this raping in the same way you made us sit there and watch that. Raping. Like, we know we could cut away. Obviously, we can imply it and cut away and, like, you know, cut to the glass right. breaking and then you know what happened and we don't have to. But then it nope. wouldn't be what it was like to watch that it's, movie. We had to fucking sit there and watch that raping and we couldn't turn away and it, fuck you. And we're going to make you do the same thing. And we were very aware, and in fact, <laughs> when, when we were talking about the rape show being its own show, the sort of B storyline, which, you know, I, we didn't know how to do it as a story. We thought thematically it was a great point, because really the scariest thing for us is watching this happen with Indiana Jones, because we're like, we're going to end up doing that too. You right. know, we're not just like, Lucas and Spielberg, you suck, because obviously they've we, given us some of the best things we've had in our life. And so, but the scary thing is, is, is watching that and going, wow, if, if they can... It be that good and then be that bad does, is that just what happens when you get old right and that's so, the episode we should we, we almost should have done but yeah we didn't like, have faith in it you know because then at the end and the boys were going to be like you know we're all going to get raped too someday so right now so let's just preempt it right now somebody's out there animating me and Trey raping the boys yeah and so we, we already know, thought we, of it we, we already thought, thought of it, of it. <laughs> we already thought of it we were going to do it too but then we couldn't figure out a way to do it yeah. and then Trey got sick and we had to put the China problem in there and we're not quite there. old enough yet we still have a few years before we start raping the boys. We might fondle and kiss and molest them. Yeah, but we'll rape, we're going to stop we'll right before we there. rape. Yeah. I think we're, yeah. I think it happens to everyone. <laughs> All right. All right, let's move on. So this is uh, Carmen versus Wendy, which uh, we'd actually c- kind of come up with the season before. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of like the new, one of the sort of newer directions the show goes sometimes where it's like there's some... Sometimes, you know, we really like to just do our version of Peanuts, and this is a really good example of that show where it's just all about the kids, and it's all about the relationships of the kids and, and trying to, you know, put different kids together and see how they're going to react. And so um, it really was it's, uh, the whole thing, like, when we first came up with the idea, the thing that we really liked was that position. I mean, Cartman's in it because he's Cartman, but it could be anybody. Is if you're going to fight a girl and you're in third grade, if you get beat up by a girl... You know, you're a douche and everyone hates you. But if you beat up a girl, you're a douche and everyone hates you. And so you're just kind of stuck. And to watch Cartman just get... St- it's always fun to watch Cartman especially get stuck and then try to get out and get himself deeper and get more stuck and not even realize, what, you know, what he's done to himself and stuff. So, like, that was the thing that we originally liked about this was that kind of, like, there's no way out, you know? Yeah. And when we, when we decided to put the, uh, the breast cancer theme, I had just... My grandmother who was awesome, uh, died of breast cancer like a month before this. I was like, let's put that in the show. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> she'd, be, she'd be proud. Yeah. I was trying to wear, wear some ar- awareness. 
Yeah, that's right. Killer titties. That's funny. What else? Um, it's it is nice, you know, when we have a show that it's and you know we obviously don't do it all the time. We try to make shows all kind of different, but it's nice when you have a show that's not got some big gigantic theme and it doesn't have this huge plot of like, all right, the boys go to space. You know, it's like obviously anytime you do that, you're kind of locked into explaining a lot of story, and so it's fun sometimes when we have these really simple stories and you can just let you know all the all the comedy come from the dialogue and the relationships between the kids. Oh yeah, and eating in underwear, that was a big breakthrough too. That was like a big like when eating in underwear I thought was really, really funny. And then we almost cut it out. Yeah, no, eating It's so weird, so you know what funny. happens all the time with these shows, you know, because at first you sit there on Thursday and you're like, All right, well Carmen and Wendy are gonna fight and he's trying to get out of it and it's like, Well that doesn't sound like you know, a twenty one minute. Like how how are we gonna Because sometimes, you know, a show can go t- 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 all over the place. So at first you're sitting there going, well, we're going to have to think of something else because we'll never fill out the time. And then, of course, you always get there to Tuesday night and you're two minutes long. Right. And you can't figure out what to cut out, you know. So um, we always try to learn the lesson. We always say this at the end of the run. Well, you know what we really learned is keep the ideas simple because there's more room for the jokes. And just keep things simple. 21 minutes isn't a lot of time. And then for some reason every season we start it and we're just like, Oh, we need more. We need more. That's not enough of an yeah. idea. We forget that our job is the right job. Which is why China Problem and the Rape Show ended up being one show because at the beginning of the run, we're like, okay, well, those ideas aren't big enough. We're, they would have been. Honestly, that we had this big discussion where we're like, well, that's not a big enough idea, the raping of Indiana Jones and the boys uh, and the, in us and the show and everything. No, that's not big yeah. enough. And, it's and so it dumb. wasn't and re- at the time, but at something would have come out of it. Yeah, but then the retrospective, we could have made a totally right. deep right. show out of that, but we just didn't face it. And then as we get later in the run, we simplify, simplify until... Yep. See, that's already how we're getting older and we're starting to rape our own ideas. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Move on. This is pandemic, which is sort of another you're on the train or you're not. Um, only because, for a different reason, because, you know, for us anyway, there was like, we all thought it was funny the idea of just these Peruvian flute bands because they are all over the place. But then we kind of realized, like, well, we travel a lot. And afterwards it came out, you know, it, a lot of people were like, what are you talking about? A lot of people didn't really get it. And, yeah. and if you didn't get the whole Peruvian flute band thing and that they're taking over and they're everywhere, then obviously that's half the show, so you're not going to be. But uh, we, had, we had that idea. I mean, we didn't know exactly where it was going to go, but we had the idea of doing something about Peruvian flute bands. And then we also came up with the idea independently of, of shooting live-action cute critters. And we settled on guinea pigs. And then we found this place online where this lady made costumes for guinea pigs. And then we had this whole other idea about a live action guinea pigs are taking over. And we were going to do something about, uh, there was another idea. We, we were going to take the guinea pigs and they were going to be, um, take, like before the, we combined these ideas, there was going to be a show where the guinea pigs would have, um, uh, when the financial kind of meltdown started in September, October, it was like the guinea pigs were going to be, the government basically <laughs> tried to, <laughs> the government tried to, Help the economy, but they were going to basically inject some kind of steroid into the economy. Just and make so they grow big. To grow big. So they're testing on guinea pigs, and then they got <laughs> big, and then they took over the bank, and they wouldn't let anybody in. Yeah. That might have been a good show. Yeah. But then we kind of were kind of sitting there. We'd gotten halfway in this proving flute band thing and kind of like, well, this doesn't need more of this. And then we found out guinea pigs are from eaten Peru. in Peru and yeah. eat in kind of from Peru. From the Andes Mountains in Peru. And then we're like, well, fuck. And then they're kind of, we kind of have to put those together. Yeah. And so we kind of put them together. And we were always trying to figure out a way to. We knew we wanted to do like this, you know, because the new the new way to do horror movies these days is like what we call startle. You oh know, yeah, and then the startle idea. It's all just yeah. about like psh, it's all just about trying to do three frames of something in a really loud sound to try to make people jump, even though it's nothing it was to that, do with what's going It was going that movie on. Quarantine that came out. Yeah, and I actually saw that thing I think before Indiana Jones, and I was just laughing because it was just yeah. so it had no theme or string of any We're kind just of trying logic. To startle you. It was just startling. That's not the <laughs> same as being scared. Yeah. Being startled is not the same as being scared. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so we knew we wanted to do, you know, something with uh, with that with the guinea pigs, but we couldn't figure it's like, okay, but how do we shoot it? And then we we're like, of course it's someone got a video camera because then you're doing the whole uh Cloverfield. Cloverfield thing too. And then people, yeah. And so that that that's when that was a big breakthrough getting Randy to get a new video camera. Yeah, that actually came like probably what, Monday night? Like mm, I was gonna say Saturday because they did all those big shots in like two or three days. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Saturday night maybe. Sunday, probably Sunday. Right? Yeah. All these big. Well, they, on this episode, the couple of big shots. I mean, these handheld shots are pretty technically challenging for 
Um, yeah, and the so crew I mean, the way the way that we kind of figured out how can we do this quickly was since you know so much with a handheld camera is you're whipping around and you're whipping to something else. So we we basically cheated it where the camera's on something and you're seeing a guinea pig and then it starts to whip and then we just put in a bunch of cut in a bunch of whipping and then we whip onto the next scene. So rather than being one long shot with a real whip across real stuff, it's all kind of faked like that, and that's what made it possible to do. And Cloverfield, like, Cloverfield could have been a good movie. It wasn't very good, but it could have been good. And one of the main things about Cloverfield, it could have been good if it was rated R, basically. Right. Like it could have been just hardcore. Yeah. So you notice that, oh my, people in Cloverfield say, oh my God, yeah, because they can't say fuck, right. which is what you would do if something was happening like right. that. They just scream, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And so that's again, Randy, everyone just screams, oh my God, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and we do like taking shows, you know, like we did with Clyde and the Lice episode. You know, we like taking characters we've seen for a while and, and you know, let them be in a show and learn a little bit more about them. And and that was, that was the fun part with Craig, because I just, I love Craig's little attitude throughout this entire thing. Yeah, Craig gets his little, like, this is what always happens with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's like Craig just knows if he goes and hangs out with them, he's gonna end up in space. And the best thing we really lucked out, the band that did all this Peruvian flute music lived in LA, um, and and was actually like, uh, and got a hold of the guy, and is like, not only could we get the stuff, but we were able to say, okay, can you play Mary Had a Little Lamb for us, and can you play? And then my favorite thing was at the end of part two, we had them play Cars by Gary Newman, and I actually think the Peruvian flute band version of Cars is one of my favorite pieces of music I've ever. Heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on to part we two. Since part two, and we'll talk more about guinea yeah. pigs. This is part two of pandemic, and it is like the the, the idea of the basic. I mean, part of the idea this this idea started too with the, making fun of that movie Night of the Lepus, um, or those big creature movies of the seventies where they would just you know make a little town and have grasshoppers or ants go through it, and then they, you know the big I don't know what they call it big animal movies or something. Um, there's an ants one and. There's one with a lot of critters. There's one with rats. Um, but then when we came to the idea of base, so then the idea is kind of morphed into this thing where we could dress them up in little costumes, right? And then we looked online, and then there was a there was somebody who made costumes for yeah, guinea pigs. all these costumes were not made by us. We found a website, <laughs> and uh, a woman who made these, and we're like, oh, there's a little dinosaur. There's a little prison outfit, and we're like. So that's how the, yeah, that, yeah. the jokes came from what was available, not so much like, like the pirate was just because there was pirate. Yeah. Well, I mean, what, was there anything we didn't use? There was a couple we didn't yeah, use. There was a leprechaun. Yeah, other human things, like a fireman, remember? There's, there's like a fireman. A fireman. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the thing was is that when we first had the idea, we're like, all right, well, let's we'll just get guinea pigs in costumes and we'll just shoot a bunch of stuff of them, you know, eating and running around and doing all this. And then so we actually, you know, set up a whole shoot and had a big green screen and had a crew there and we got these guinea pigs and we got these costumes. And if you put a guinea pig, guinea pigs don't move around much anyway. But if you put a guinea pig into a costume, it, their defense mechanism is to freeze. Yeah, it's That's, like a playing dead thing. Yeah. It's like a possum yeah. thing. They do not move. And so as soon as they get put into a costume, they think they're about to die, and they just will not move at all. In fact, some of the shots would look like freeze frames. We're like, okay, we'll, we'll play it. And they're like, it is playing. And it was yeah. just this thing would just sit there and not move and not blink and not Twitter and not anything. Yeah. It would just sit there. So all the footage you see of all the, the little bit of movement in all this show is like there'd be uh you know 180 minutes of footage yeah. and you're seeing like the 16 seconds where they're moving there's literally there were <laughs> three full days of shooting and out of those three full days came the shots that are in the show where they're at least twitch a nose or blink or do something in the costume and then you know in, in the week before you know for last week's episode we were able to get them walking across because they weren't in costume but as soon as we put them in costume, it was just trouble. And we, I think we finally got a couple of them to take, like, a couple steps. And then, you know, that's why then the whole idea, once we had shot the guinea pigs, we're like, okay, they do absolutely nothing. We're like, well, then that's the joke, is that the camera's moving around, people are screaming, but they're really just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So. <laughs> Which kind of goes along with Startle, too. Yeah. I barely made it so. the house. Um, Anything else? Sherry, My favorite part of this episode is when... Um, Ran, when they're stuck in the bus, and Randy's like, I'll oh, check outside, and he goes in, and, and then you can see, and then he, he looks down to the steps, and he goes, oh, oh, when he goes down the yeah, steps. Yeah. Like, like, the idea of Randy's making this more dramatic and more scary is really funny. Yeah, really nothing much is happening. Um, but yeah, these are, I mean, basically just your typical sort of green screen shots with real guinea pigs. I don't know why a dude falls out that window. It doesn't make any sense. We're not doing anything. Yeah. Randy, what are we gonna 
And here's one. Of course, again, we didn't actually have it bust through. We just had to have it like be there because it doesn't do anything. Oh, that oh, was so moved he, a little. He bit. actually turned and looked. That was probably an hour it took to get that thing to do that. Yeah. Um. Yep. Is that it? That's really it. Yeah. That's all. Move on. So yeah, here's the big election show, and this is the true story. What happened with this? We during the writers' retreat, we um. We had an idea. We realized that, oh, we're going to have a show air the day after the election. So we're going to have to do a uh, – and it actually worked out really great because as as we were getting closer to the election, people couldn't believe we weren't talking about Obama and Palin and McCain and all this. And so – and it got to be like two weeks before and we were doing guinea pigs guinea costumes and people and were like, what are you doing? There was a second when we thought about making Pandemic 2. All about Obama. All about Obama yeah. was like, yeah, and then we thought about that, and then we just said, no, we're not going to. And I think that's what perplexed, you know, people even more. Is like, why the why the fuck am I watching guinea pigs yeah. the week before this huge election? They were all sure. Election? They were all sure that you know, it's like, well, that was your last chance. You know, you 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 know, the week before the election, you could have done a big show, but we had already knew at the writers retreat. We're like, all right, we're gonna air an episode on Wednesday after the election. We all know we're gonna be up all night Tuesday anyway, fixing you know, doing all the last minute changes to the shows we always do. So why don't we just do it? We'll air it on Wednesday, and we can put stuff in from the actual election. And so, as we're talking about it, we're like, well, what do we do? Do we make two? And it's like, yeah, we'll make two. You know, we'll make a version where McCain wins and a version where Obama wins. And this was in August. We're yeah, talking it was about in that. August. And of course, you know, being the lazy bastards that we are, as it got closer to the run, we only had one version, which was all the stuff with uh, Obama winning. And we're like, well, what are we gonna do? We, we can't, we can't risk it. But then we were just so. We're like Obama. Well, as, as it got Obama's closer to the win. election, it was pretty obvious he's yeah. going to win. And it's like there's there's just no way. And so we didn't spend any time doing the McCain version. Um, we wouldn't have had time. And so uh, and I remember there was a there was a it was about twenty minutes, yeah, like ten right? minutes or twenty minutes, like eight o'clock or seven o'clock, whatever. And it was like, oh man, when McCain won those first few states, you know, he he was really far ahead at first because they did you know certain states first. And there was definitely this like we were sitting there going. If he wins, we are just literally fucked. Like, what do we do? Like, we just have this whole Obama show, and we are like, and there's no way to change it because all this stuff with the, um, you know, I mean, the storylines were even they wouldn't make any sense if you switched them because you know the people are out partying because it's it's uh, Obama and you know you couldn't. It just wouldn't make any. It sense. wouldn't make any sense. So no, all we were lines we were just talking it. about what do we do, and we were g basically gonna do this. We were if, going if to if McCain did pull it out. If somehow. McCain had won, we were gonna just show the show but we were going to do commentary over it <laughs> and say and be explaining okay well we really thought obama was going to win so this would have been sweet but you kind of screwed us america and uh and you so know, you have to see a shitty show yeah basically you fucked up america. luckily obama pulled it out and uh and then you know we were able to sit there and watch the acceptance speech and we just had everyone we were ready for it so we kind of had everyone uh, standing by as Obama gave a speech and writing it down as he was talking, and, and of course it's great with the internet because in ten seconds watch. after he gave the speech, it was online, you know, to down, you know, and he was just so trying to figure out what line. Then you could see like what lines by four or five in the morning West Coast time, what lines the press was like. Yeah. Oh, this is the big line. But remember, this. I knew I, well, I, yeah, I wrote the one in because yeah. I, I we was did like, a temp version. We did a temp version, and I, I I took his speech and I'm like, okay, what's and it, it's all just such typical. No, before he did his speech, this is more, like the day before. Oh no no that's what I was gonna talk about the dog thing. Oh yeah the dog thing. Because the, <laughs> yeah. the thing was like his whole speech was such <laughs> typical political fodder that anyone would say. But there was one point where he said, you know, we're gonna there's something about the fact that they were get a he, new puppy because we're going to the, the, the new kids house. get a puppy because we're going to the White House. And I'm like people are gonna remember that. So I wrote that line, and sure enough, that's the thing that everyone yeah. remembered. Because but I was what I was talking about is yeah is was like a couple days before. You wrote just some temp stuff to put in there, so we kind right. of, oh, it'll be about this long, and it'll kind of like, uh, and I kind of went in, like, oh, you know, blah, 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 change. And it was seriously almost exactly Obama's speech anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you can, like, those political speeches that level, you yeah. basically know what they're going to say. <laughs> you know exactly what they're going to say. they say that crappy boilerplate, yeah. you know, stuff, but I thought you did a very good job with yeah. the speech, but very good job sounding like Obama. And so this week was a lot of, you know, a lot of times when we're parroting something, there's a lot of time spent sitting there watching the movies you're parroting. So this was my big week of watching all the Ocean's movies, which I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd seen Ocean's Eleven, which is yeah. which is fine. It's I think, like yeah, Ocean's yeah. Eleven was fine. Yeah. The other two are ridiculously bad. But. Yeah, but o Ocean's Ocean's Eleven is a fun fun movie to watch, yeah. even though it, it's kind of dumb. But but it was also the big. Um, it gave us the attitude of basically Obama and McCain are Clooney and Pitt. 
right. that they are they're, they're thieves, but they're great guys, and they don't kill people, and they kind of rip off things that, you know, they're not ripping off poor people. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? They're not Which bad. Which was a great change. They're likable thieves. Yeah. Originally, actually. We had, yeah, we had an idea that they were, like, more like. They were way more hardcore. Like, and cliffhanger. They were, like, we shooting had, people. and We had cliffhanger v- villains, like yeah. John Lithgow and Cliffhanger. So they we were really <laughs> bad guys. They were bad thieves. But then, and actually what had changed it was the fact that we had done Pandemic, and we're like, wow, we just did this big government conspiracy thing where the guy was like, man, shooting people, and we're like, you know, do this again. Like, oh, I guess we can't do it. And then we thought, well, let's make them like the Ocean's Eleven thieves, and then it actually made it a lot better. I think. Yeah, it, I think it, it made it better, good, too. Good change. Yeah, you guys want to buy a tea? Change oh. you can believe in. That's a good change. Let's move on. Elementary School Musical. This was one of those ideas out of nowhere. This was a, uh, this was a Thursday out of nowhere idea. We yeah, I don't remember where it came from talking about. I don't remember. I think uh, High School Musical 3 had just opened. Um, it came from just, yeah, watch. Before. Yeah, and then the idea of just, like, the everyone singing and the boys don't know why. And right, was wasn't that? I mean, yeah, was yeah, the, but it the was the first idea. What was I? I remember someone just saying, you know, because we're like, okay, well, what's going on? What's going on? You know, our typical Thursday thing, and someone said something about High School Musical three, and and you know, we had talked about High School Musical before, just because obviously it's big with kids this age, so it comes up. But we, um, you know, and then I was like, and I said jokingly, like, oh yeah, let's do High School Musical, and I'll, all I have to do this week is write a whole freaking musical, and uh, like twenty minutes later, after talking about, it, we're like, oh wait, that's a pretty good idea. I guess we are doing this, and. But then it was good because I realized pretty quickly that it wasn't a musical in the way that, like, the South Park musical, the movie was, because it, it was a parody, and those the songs in High School Musical suck ass. <laughs> and they're super, you know, they didn't... And they don't they, make any sense. Yeah, they didn't, and they don't need to be... The songs don't need shouldn't to be, be funny. funny. Right. Make, writing funny songs is hard, but writing, you know, just fodder songs, that, that can be done in a week. And so it was... Um, it was really just writing, you know, watch it. So now, of course, after the, the song, week before. The songs are like storyless. There's no, yeah. yeah, that's what made it work. And it just has, yeah, random lines in it. But the, whereas the week before we were watching a lot of Ocean's movies, now all of a sudden we're watching all the high school musical movies, which was way more brutal than watching all the Ocean's movies. But um, but these, you know, the other thing is like with kids, our kids are, are eight or nine years old. It's like that is the high school musical age, I think, we're eight or nine year old kids in America they all know high school musical right yeah I mean I think yeah and you know and I think eight you know third you know fourth grade kids they stuff they watch is them in high is they think about high school and yeah. high school kids watch Melrose Place because they think they're right. you know it's like they want you're always watching above people your in 20s want to watch older shows than your people in their 30s <laughs> Matt and I like watching people in their 70s now <laughs> we're, ju- we're just getting ready we just go back and watch Cocoon over and over again <laughs> The bucket list. <laughs> That's a bucket list. Um, but you know, it was it was when we um, when we had come up with the idea with the uh, with the Bradley, this little or no, no, what's his name, Braden, Bryden, Bryden, and his and his father, who uh, you know is the abusive dad, but abusive in that he goes around slapping people all the time. Um, that the that's that the part funny. I really like the slap party. Yeah. Yeah. And th- I don't know why there's a pig nose on that girl, um, <laughs> but that, that was obviously, I mean, the, this is uh, a parody of the scene in High School Musical 1, where they're in the cafeteria, and there just is this part where this fat girl's dancing on a table, and someone put a pig nose on her. Yeah, I think that's not very cool. I can't believe they did that. <laughs> this also, this episode's written a little bit different. Um, I mean, this is kind of writer geek talk, but there's a lot of stuff in this episode where... Um, it's a little bit different, especially towards the end, where we don't see, I don't know what you would call this, but we don't see characters make decisions as much as set them up, and then the next scene you see them, and they've made the decision. Right. So the boys, in the end, you don't see them working on their song or anything, but you know they have. Right. Or you don't know, that, or you don't know they have, and it's revealed in the last scene, oh, that's, you know what I mean? Or so you right. set them up, and then you pay them off in the next scene. So I don't know what kind of... It's probably good writing. It's probably good writing. Other than the shitty stuff we do where it's like we try to explain every single thing. Well, we did it in the Vampire Show, the next show a little bit, too. Maybe right. maybe it's better. I think it's better. Maybe it's the rebirth of South Park right now, South yeah. Park 3.0. There's going to be more shows like this. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, actually, it's probably worse because we're getting older. It's that rape thing. I think yeah. we're probably just getting stupid. Maybe this is we're molesting our kids right now. <laughs> cool, let's see what the next one, how we molest them next. Yeah. So this, the Ungroundable was another sort of gift from God at the end of a tough run because uh, I, when, what had actually happened was that in the room when we were kind of figuring out, okay, what's, what should the end of the um, of High School Musical episode be, we were like, oh, how about, you know, the girls just suddenly are on to the next thing. And we're like, well, what is it? Because the, now the, the movie that was coming out was that uh, Twilight. Twilight. 
and we're like, oh, okay, so that's the thing is that they, the boys show up, they do their big song, but the girls aren't into High School Musical anymore. Now they're into Twilight and they're all dressing up like vampires. And we were like, yeah, and th that seemed like a great idea, but then we're like, wait a minute, that could actually be its own show. Um, and it was coming up with the goth kids, yeah, and making so, a goth kids story. Like how would, yeah, because and then, then it was like, like a whole oh yeah, show. there's this, yeah, and it was going to be the end of the of last week's episode, and we're like, oh yeah, and then the girls are all get, dressing uh, va like vampires, and then we can have the goth kids show up at the very end and be like, and then we're like, wait a minute, that's that's a big emotional thing for goth kids to when you know kids like people co-opting their it's suddenly cool the way they're, they're dressing, and so we're like, all right, well let's hold on to that, we'll save it, and then Thursday we came in and sort of started talking about. A vampire episode and came up with the whole Butters storyline of him wanting to be one and thinking they were real and all that stuff and and so it was a another show where we kind of just out of nowhere kind of figured it all out on Thursday which was a blessing yeah the, and, uh, we talked a lot about how goth because like when we grew up I don't there was probably a vampire craze at some point I don't know but goth kids that was a big thing you know if you're into the cure and sisters of mercy and shit like that and you dressed all in black and you were depressed and you smoked and you hang out at the Denny's and like that was definitely uh, even though Trey and I didn't go to high school together we both had that group in our high schools like it seems like a pretty common yeah click that you know and then vampires I, you know it seems like a very different thing we couldn't we we're trying to talk about <laughs> like where the line is between vampires and goths and why the goths are like no we're not like that like this isn't we're not playing around we actually are depressed yeah right and we actually are bummed out and we actually like to drink coffee right. and smoke this isn't fun <laughs> <laughs> I wish I didn't have to be this way. Actually, I didn't tell you this, but I was uh, <laughs> I was in Nashville last weekend to go to a Titans game just for the fun of it, and we ended up on on Saturday night at this random bar in Nashville where there was like there's these what they call themselves they were like skinheads against racism or something like that. <laughs> so they were skinheads and they had like skinhead, but it was just like but all their tattoos said things like equality and you know racial you know acceptance and all this stuff and it was like what and. But anyway, what, they were hanging out with all these other people, and this one girl who had like all all these studs pierced in her upper lip, and then all these studs pierced on her forehead and tatted all over and black. She comes up to me and she goes, "Thank you so much for that vampire episode." <laughs> and it was just like you know, it was like just finally speaking for us, you know, and those freaking. It was like totally. She was totally the goth girl, just going, "Oh, thank you so much." <laughs> But it made me. It, I, we kind of realized too during this episode that that we like the that we like the goth kids that they're kind of cool, yeah. you know. That like they have their little like depressing attitude, but that essentially they're kind of cool. They're kind of cool people. Yeah, I really I really like the goth kids. I mean, I liked it, and I went went back and watched that episode where we first came up with them, the raisins episode. And we were definitely like ripping on them in that episode and sort of saying the same things about them, like they were just right. playing they're, this part. They're conforming they're, to they're, their own yeah. thing. And, they, right. and we were ripping on them, but you know they've made little appearances here and there since then. And then, you know, I think this show is the final kind of like them really coming to be as their own character. I think that we'll see more of them yeah. just because I really like them. Yeah, a lot. I like them too. They're kind of this other. There's this other attitude in the school that's not really represented. Yeah, <laughs> and I like too. You know, the way we've used them in the past is they're kind of Stan's little subconscious, like. Yeah. He's kind of sometimes who they they talk to him and he talks to them when he's having problems emotionally and that's the way I really want to keep using them. I think it's, it's like one of the yeah the, the, in that way we talked about and what they don't like about this is it they like being invisible they like being out by the dock and smoking and they this kind of pulls them into the lime you know this pulls them into the into yeah. the school's life and they, they don't want to be a part of it right and they get confused with these vampires and stuff so I like the goth kids yeah. So that all being said, maybe, I we'll, think maybe I, we'll molest them next I year. I think what we'll do, I think now I'm really excited to make a whole nother year of South Park so that we can do commentary on them yeah. right about this time next year. So wait, you're saying next year after Thanksgiving, we get to come back here and do One commentary? year from today, we can be right here doing this again. Fuck yes. But everyone, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll try to make some more and make them funny. Bye-bye. Thanks. <laughs>